Welcome to round one, the series where we play just the beginning of a game to give you a taste of what it's like. In today's episode, we will be playing Dice Throne Adventures, an epic genre-bending two to four player cooperative expansion based on the beloved fantasy series from Roxley Games. Each of our players will control one of the many Dice Throne heroes as we work together to navigate dangerous environments, destroy minions, collect loot, and ultimately attempt to defeat the Mad King himself. Utilizing a series of linked scenarios and non-destructive legacy elements, we will be forced to battle the armies of the king in order to gain permanent deck upgrades in the form of cards and equipment with each new session that we play, making our heroes stronger and better prepared for the duration of the campaign. You'll witness every move that we make, and after the dust settles, join us as we discuss our entire experience and find out which of us came out alive. Welcome to the table. We are going to be playing Dice Throne Adventures, and we're sitting here with none other than Manny Tremblay, the illustrator, artist, co-creator of Dice Throne. Welcome yep. to the table, Manny. It's awesome to be here. And of course, we have Kira, Jeremy, and myself. We, as with almost every round one lately, we're playing more than round one. Yeah. So, uh, truth be told, we actually played round one effectively, nope. but we didn't play so well. We <laughs> failed. Uh, this game is not a pushover game. This is the cooperative version of Dice Throne. Yeah, so hopefully you already have a understanding of Dice Throne coming into this. If you don't, we're not going to get in depth on how to play the game as far as Dice Throne is concerned. You obviously pick it up as you go and then you can check our channel. We have a bunch of different things about Dice Throne in general. What we're going to do is we're actually going to teach you how to play Dice Throne Adventures. You're going to get some of these uh, aspects as we go along through it. The idea behind the game is that we're all cooperating, which is very, very different than the original Dice Throne, which is typically yeah. a one versus one duel or you know teams against teams or a free for all. In this one, we're cooperating in order to defeat, can I say it, the Fallen? Yeah. To get to, <laughs> can I say it, the Mad King? Yes. Okay, <laughs> so the game is gonna take place over four different scenarios and I expect that you are going to get defeated the first couple times you play. We did, we went through the very first scenario and we lost. But losing in this game isn't necessarily a bad thing because you're allowed to build up your deck. So it's a right. little bit of a deck builder. You're always going to come into the game with your own character and your own personalized deck, but you're going to get loot to the game. And this loot turns into cards, which means you're going to inflect new cards in your deck and get stronger and stronger and stronger as you play. Yeah, the, the loot is not where it ends either. No. And you're going to get loot quite a bit in this game. But like we just said, we went through the first round, we went all the way up, we were not gonna spoil what happened completely, but we did get all the way to the boss, uh, and then one by one, we all died. <laughs> uh, it was all by myself at the end. It yeah. was Kira all by herself at the end. What happened in the last turn? So, uh, <laughs> we were hoping I'd be able to get my shadow dance off, or if I'm really lucky, my shadow shank, which was the my all sixes. I needed three, I had two, I ended up with a complete dud roll by the end and was unable to defeat the, the Fallen we were up against. And right. so uh, we got very close. He was down to what, like six, six health? health? Yeah. And yeah. he started at 90 something, He started right? at 90 yeah, health. Yeah, it was yeah. insane, <laughs> insane. So we got very close. And I, I had the most health out of all of us and the most CP, and so I had the best chance to be on my own, but it didn't work out. It did not work out, but we're here again to try it again. Yes. When you lose in this game, as I said, you do get to retain the loot and the treasures that you found. All the gold that you collect in this game is universal, meaning that if we collect 40 gold, all the players have 40 gold yep. in order to spend, and we actually went to the shopkeeper at the end of that first scenario, and we spent our gold. We spent it wisely, and we have new cards in our deck, so you're yep. gonna be seeing some of these cards. Mind you, there's gonna be some spoilers in here. Very, very minor, so you're gonna learn some of the cards that you can find yep. in Dice Stone, or Dice Stone Adventures. You're also going to see some of the monsters. You're probably gonna see the first boss, which could be one of three different fallen bosses. We don't wanna reveal too much, but you're gonna find out, so yes. just know that that spoiler is about to come. All right, so we've randomly set up the map, and there's gonna be a variety of different map setups. These are gonna be comprised of tiles. These tiles come in levels, and they have level one, level two, and level three tiles. These are all randomly assorted. So we have eight level one tiles that are drawn from a giant stack of level one tiles. Right. Meaning that each time you play this game, it's gonna be a random assortment and a random dungeon that you're generating. And you're gonna use this card here that's gonna tell you how these uh, tiles set up. It's also gonna show you where 
some loot's going to be able to be found, and also where the boss monster might be. So we know from looking at this card that the boss monster is one of these three tiles, but we have to actually get to him. Yep. As you start playing level two and level three scenarios, you may start in really random areas yep. and then have to spread out all kinds of different directions. We have kind of a path that we can get to, but as you play uh, harder and harder levels, you're going to be going to harder tiles, and then you're going to have to find that boss, and it could be anywhere, literally. Yep. It should right. be noted too, you can split up in this game. Yes. Like we're not all just traveling across this together. You can actually, I can go to this tile while you go over to this tile. If the path is open, you can move as far as you want as long as it's been uh, explored and there's no minions out there. So I can join a battle even if I'm across the map as long as I have a direct route there, which we would at that point because someone would have explored all those tiles. The game is also going to tell you how to set it up for all the characters. So each of us is going to draw four cards at the start of the game. Mm -hmm. Each of us is going to start with two CP or combat points in the game. We're going to start at an X number of health depending upon the number of players. And that number is 35 health minus five for every player playing. Mm -hmm. So we have four players playing, that's 20. So we take 35 minus 20, we start at 15 health, which yes. I tell you that is not a lot of health to <laughs> nope. use in this game. <laughs> And then the boss himself is going to start at 10 CP, and that yep. CP is going to be building and building and building until you actually confront him. CP is going to be contributed by the minions that we discover in the game. And once you get to the boss, which we'll explain in a moment, but once you get to him, he's going to convert all that CP into upgrades. Yep. So he's going to have start with a <laughs> bunch of different upgrades. We have to actually earn our upgrades, but he'll start from some just from uh, our presence yeah. in his dungeon. Yeah, he does. <laughs> all right, so who's going to start first? So to determine who goes first, we all roll a d20. And so I, we all rolled, and I got the highest number, so I'm going to be the person that goes first. What loot cards did you get? Do you remember what so loot cards you So I do you remember, had? actually. I got a Codex, which is a card that allows me to go through my entire deck and pull any card I want and put it into my hand. Nice. Which is amazing. Um, and then I got an upgraded Samesies. And uh, if you've played Dice Throne at all, you know Samesies is a great card to be able to match any one die to another die. Um, and then I also got a full metal jacket, basically. It's like an armor equipment. Nice. And every hero has two equipment slots. And so you can get these equipment cards. First, I got to put them in the deck, draw them. And then once I get it, I can set it next to my board. And now I have that equipment for the whole game. And the one I got was the full mithril jacket. And it allows me to reroll any number of dice during my defense roll. Wow. That's awesome. Which is super awesome. That's incredible. So yeah, before you get into your turn, talk uh -huh. about the upgrades real quick. There's a couple different varieties. There's mm -hmm. the cards that slot off to the side, your, your equipment, and then you have upgrade cards, which actually replace other cards. Yes. They give you maybe additional benefits for one of the original cards, and also usually drive down the CP cost of playing yes. it. And that's what you want to do. You want to start upgrading your deck to be mm -hmm. able to uh, confront some of the later um, Fallen, and of course the Mad King himself. Yep, very true. All right, so walk us through a turn. Okay, so I get to go first, and obviously over here I can move until I hit either one of two things, an undiscovered environment, which will mm -hmm. be the first one, or if I hit join, run into a tile that has someone battling a minion. Those are the two things that would stop me. So I'm gonna flip the first tile. The effects of a tile apply directly to the person who flipped it okay. or experienced yeah. it for the first time. So we would go around and we'd do, well notice that it has one gold. So we have, like uh, Jeremy said, we have a communal gold. And so we're gonna just tick one on that. The boss gets three CP, so the boss has his own CP dial. So he's gonna go to 13. And like we said, that dial is just going to keep ramping up throughout yep. the game, and you'll see the haunting nightmare that that means <laughs> towards yes, the end. Yes. Yeah. yeah, there's no cap. Like in normal dice storm, there's a cap of 15 CP. The boss can have 30, 40 CP, as much as we allow him to. And the, really, the variability there is how quickly do we find him. And that's the key. Like if we find him quickly, he can have much less. But the trick is you want to actually kind of explore because you want to find treasure and loot <laughs> and upgrade. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. The balance. Nate, Nate loves to talk about the greed of the game. Like yeah. It's one of his favorite no, parts. Nice. Is it is good. Like how greedy do you want to get when you're playing? And then the tile has an ability. It says you receive two damage okay. to reveal an adjacent tile. If desired, you may move to this tile as if you had explored it. So you can take so two I can. damage. 
Um, let's do it. I'm going to do it. This is the beginning of the game. So. Right. Which is I'm not an easy decision because we only have 15 health each that so we have to <laughs> right. make it to the boss <laughs> with. So hopefully we'll figure out a way to possibly heal yep. or something so that we're not totally hobbled at the end. <laughs> All right. Again, this is the Ivory Woods one. Now, you only get the abilities for Right Man if you move into it, but you can choose not Correct. to because of the tile. So because of what the Stained Spire allows me to do is reveal an adjacent tile mm -hmm. and then move into it if I want to. Okay. And moving into it means I'm now exploring it, which now the effects then trigger. If I choose not to or we as a group decide, now nah, let's not do that. Then that tile expires. The boss doesn't get a CP, we don't get the gold, we don't fight a green level monster and we don't get any benefits or negatives. So there's some negative things to avoid, but some positive things that exactly. we won't get. Exactly. So, what are you going to do? Mm. It's up to you. <laughs> Early on, probably take that green guy pretty easily. I think we, I think we fight him. All right, let's do it. Let's do All it. right, so let's uh, move me into that tile. Perfect, okay. Now you're so going to gain some things from that yeah. tile right. as well. So it says gain backstrike and wither. So wither is a negative status effect which means all my damage is reduced by one. Whereas Backstrike allows me that anytime I'm attacked by an opponent, I can roll one d6, and I deal half the damage back to the attacker. So one's a positive, one's a negative. All right. So, all right. We got another gold. Um, yes. yes, awesome. So we get two gold. Now, one key thing to note about gold is that gold is rounded up at the end of the game. So if we can crest that five, mm -hmm. we get 10. Oh, if nice. we can get to 11, we get 15. You know, It always rounds up to the nearest five. Got it. And we Which have one boss CP One more well. CP for the boss. Oh, yeah. Don't want to. Yeah, with every tile you minion. flip nearly, there's going to be boss CP that's added. And then we're going to draw a minion from the stack of minions. And there's a variety of these as well in the game. Yeah. And these are all going to be random as well. There's no seeding of it. And right. we're going to flip it over. And then you're going to see a number of different stats, including the, uh, the mob's name, its picture, its number of health, which mm -hmm. is 12 in this case, the number of CP that it has. Now, this is important because there are abilities that we have, such as uh, Knockdown, that can take away those CP from them, preventing them from taking their actions. Mm -hmm. uh, but normally, that's just an a, a arbitrary number that's going to sit there unless it's used in some Correct. way. Correct. So it's two CP, and you don't mark it yeah. unless you're specifically reducing that number. Right, and then it has its abilities. These are the things it wants to roll. It has its own defensive uh, stats as well. And we'll get into that once we get into the actual combat. Yep, so the first good. thing that you get to do, man, is you actually get to fight it unless this minion has first strike. Correct. And this one does not have first strike. Thank gosh, because those are awful. So So now it's effectively into good old fashioned dice throne. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm gonna go through my turn order just like I would in a normal game of dice throne, where I gain one CP, mm -hmm. I draw one card, and then I look at the cards I have. And cards are pretty, pretty much open information in this they game, are, right? They are, exactly. Like, I would totally play cards down on the yeah, table yeah, yeah. With, my, with my friends. So I have some fun instant actions. I have a getting paid, so for sure I'm going to do that. I like getting paid. I like getting paid. <laughs> Everyone loves getting paid. So I gain two CP, um, and I also have nice. feeling good. So it cost me zero CP. Getting paid, getting <laughs> feeling good. Uh, getting paid, feeling good. <laughs> the words right out of my So let's see how good I feel. So I roll my dice. And I only feel one health good. Right. <laughs> so I gain one of the right. So what's health like, real quickly? You start with 15 in this scenario Correct. with four players. How high can that actually go? You can go so, past the yes, 15, Yes, right? you can go past your starting health. You can go 10 over starting health. Okay. Max. Okay. Max, yeah. Okay. And that's a dice thrown rule. So that applies in the dueling game sure. and the co-op. Okay. Okay, so let's see, what do I have? I have five CP, I have an upgrade card. Um, let's upgrade. Absolutely. Because we're playing a co-op, I want my, my hero to be as powerful as I can be. So I'm going to upgrade Overpower to level 2. It also gives me a secondary ability, mm -hmm. which is nice to kind of... That would have been great, you know, in the last game when I failed that roll. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Yeah, I know. So I'm going to upgrade this. It's going to cost me 2 of my CP. Go down, not up. Yeah, that's good. Yep. And then um, I don't like this Wither, so I'm going to play Get That Out of Here. And get that wither out of here. Man, <laughs> it's gone. Throw it. I, I feel <laughs> if I didn't know better, I'd feel you stacked your first hand. <laughs> yes, it, it would seem that way, that wouldn't was it? Solid. But I actually did shuffle that. All right. So now I'm gonna I'm no longer in my main phase upgrading. So yep. now I'm gonna attack. The entropy mage. Come on. Uh, that's, a, that's a whole lot of hearts. That so this is, is kind of fun. I could hearts. actually go after this. 
Ooh. And heal, or I could do my war cry and heal two and deal two. But we're playing dice throne, so we don't play dice throne like that. <laughs> As Manny rolls these dice, one of the unique things is if he doesn't kill this particular monster, uh, it will stay on the board, meaning that the next player has the opportunity to kind of sweep along and, and take those monsters out. It's not back and forth. Like, unlike dice throne, it's not them, you, them, you. It's just he attacks, they're going to do their attack, and then it's the next player. So. Exactly. Okay, so I actually successfully rolled overpower. Nice. As you just upgraded it. Which I just upgraded. That's a great feeling, actually. This is no camera magic. <laughs> this actually happened. Yes. Okay, so I hit o overpower, so I'm now I'm going to roll three dice and deal damage equal to the roll value. So that is 13, no, 12. Yeah, okay. that's just enough. That's 12 damage, and then he is concussed, it doesn't matter in this case. Okay. Um, and then you're gonna roll defense. Yep. So when you look at the uh, the creature here, it also has its own defensive roll. In this case, they're going to roll three, and depending upon what she rolls, you go ahead and roll them, they're gonna do specific things. Yeah. And it's always the person to the... The right, the, the, the actual previous player. Player. So you rolled one of the chaos things, which is going to give him one chaos token. Which but, one it, of this but it doesn't matter, because he kills him. Right. Yeah. It won't matter, but so you normally would normally would get put it, it on there, and that probably activates something on his board, correct? Exactly. Got it. So he's out. So Wow. That's I just one shot of the entropy mage, guys. That is a heck of a turn. <laughs> All right, so he destroyed him in one shot. Now. We get a reward. Ooh, so yeah. this is really cool. I'm going to pick this up and lean over the table. This is the loot table, which is awesome. So anytime a mob is destroyed or anytime you find loot on the board in various locations, all the players get to roll a D20 mm. and get whatever it says on there. Now, this is a table. It could be gold that they're contributing to the group. It could be healing themselves. It could be damage tokens to be able to use in a future round for them. There's even things that allow you to draw some of those shop cards to be able to identify, just like in an RPG, when you actually go to the shop at the end of the yeah. round. So everyone roll a D20, okay, so. and we'll go in turn order, starting with the active player. What'd you get there? Okay, so I rolled an eight. You get one. What does that one, one card. mean? That's a draw, a card, draw a card, right? So that's the card icon, so I get to draw a card and put it in my hand. Perfect. What'd you get? I got a 15. 15, two, two bucks gold. to the group. Two gold. So and go ahead and add an extra gold for me, too, because I have a... Uh, he had a 13. Six. I had a 14. So there we go. We're at six, which means we're actually going to get 10 gold at the end of the scenario if yep, we don't sure. die. Right now, anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully more than that. All right, Manny, so that is your turn. Yep. Now we go to the next player, and yes. you get to move. I, I do get to move, but I am playing the Vampire Lord. I've never played the Vampire Lord in all of my plays of Dice Stone, so this is, well, not my first experience, because we just did fail, and I failed <laughs> with the Vampire Lord. But one of the pieces, I got three pieces of loot in the, in the first run through. One, I bought, but two, I found throughout the game rolling the die, one of which ended up being legendary. Like we said, when you take those things, you take them face down, and then you can pay the shopkeeper mm -hmm. to reveal them. My legendary was not this time four, yes. which was huge because when that comes up, I'm able to avoid nine damage. Yeah, so that's a pretty sweet defensive card. All right, so I am going to move to this tile right here and reveal that one. Uh, it is a Toll Bridge 2. And like with all of these, we look first at the boss CP before we get to the really nasty bit. <laughs> uh, this is going to be two more boss CP. Okay, he's at 16. And as with any Toll Bridge, I need to pay something. Pay three CP or else spawn a level two blue creature. Ooh. Um, I only have two <laughs> CP, <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess I'm going to have to spawn a level two blue creature. It'd only be fitting if that was a troll Fight. under that bridge. Oh, that would be awesome. Uh, I hope so. Did you so make a troll, Manny? You made an arcane This isn't vibra. a troll. <laughs> arcane definitely not a troll. Vibra. Wow. Uh, Kira, you want to, uh-oh, oh, and no. first strike. This says first strike, so she's going to attack you right off the bat, and She's going to come at you pretty hard, but she's got a passive ability too. So at the start of each of her turns, she's going to gain a blood power on top of it. All right. Oof. Can you hand me one of those health tracks so I can track this? The interesting awful, thing awful too thing. about these minions is they have this AI sort of objective that they're shooting for. Manny, you want to talk about what her AI objective is? Sure. So all minions and the fallen have what are considered objective role types. So in her case, she's going to be chasing after two slashes or and three vortexes or fours and fives. So there's three different layers. So 
if she only successfully does two slashes in a vortex, she still does some damage. Right. And will she stop if she achieves that? No, she'll take all three to oh, try okay. to get the highest value. Okay. So the, the objective is the best thing she could do. Right. I see. And so that's that, that's her goal. And just like in normal dice throwing, we can play wild cards, helping hands, we can mess with their dice and everything. So. Well, and if we don't take care of her quickly and she accumulates these blood powers, they're going to, when she has three of them, she's going to do even more stuff. So let's just yes. hope that doesn't happen. Correct. We'll address it if we get to that. Ten hit points, huh? So go ahead and roll. So okay, maybe. first, now strike. first yeah. You, oh yeah, she gets first to go strike. before you first start your strike. turn. Oh, I get to attack first. Nice. <laughs> before anything, right? Yes, first strike. So, just like in normal dice throwing, it's as if she won the roll off and she's going first. Yeah. Yep. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to keep one of those and both slashes. She's already done four damage. Yep. And oh. and that is oh, not quite. That's not no, good. I need one more vortex. <coughs> Oh, I don't need one, but if I get one. Nice. So that's uh, actually the middle. It's five. Yep. So five it's damage. five damage total. All right. But you get a defensive roll. But yeah, you get your defense. Yeah. So I'm rolling three defensive dice for my immortal flesh. And I got... All hands. On, on two hands, at least two hands, inflict bleed. So Kay. she's getting bleed, nice. ironically. <clears throat> well, she also uses blood power just like you do. Exactly. <laughs> she's like a small vampire. Yeah, they're friends. So that's that's my defense. So I'm gonna be taking. Yeah, I'm gonna be taking all of that damage. How much damage was five. it? Five, five total. So I'm down to ten already. This is not like your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I protest, sir. Well, so now you get to start your turn. Yeah, so you get to gain a CP. Gain a CP. Starting my good old turn. Draw a card. Draw a card. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, Consume blood. I don't know if he's gonna do much, so I'm gonna roll. Okay. All right, what should I go? Mm. Mm. It's kind of a smorgasbord right there. You're on your way to rend. Yeah, rend isn't bad. Yeah. Ultimate. <laughs> Ultimate. <laughs> Ooh, dang. Oh, dang. Rend in the wrong Do we have any cards to help you? Like yeah, can it, does anyone have a six it? Because <laughs> I could use bloodthirst. I don't have enough CP to help you yet. No, I think it's, yeah, it's too early. I don't have any good cards. Well, I spent all mine, but they were not dice picks. I have all good cards, but they're high yeah. CP value. So do you just chase Rend instead? I am going to chase Rend. All right, come on. Oh, oh no. What an awful, so. awful roll. What's the best I can salvage out of this? <laughs> a nothing. whole lot of nothing. Oh, a oh. whole lot of nothing. I chased it, and oh. I failed. No more blood power I'm to gain for her. I'm going to tip no. that. You're going to tip it? I'm going to tip your six to a five and get a small straight. Or you can tip the four to a three and get rend. It's uh, yeah. Kind What's of your rend choice. do? Six damage. Plus roll three dice and you can add sure. damage, gain blood we'll, we'll power, it, draw cards. We'll tip it to rend. Oh, all, all right. right. Whew, saved by the tip. Nice. Anything. And Spend that is why it's a cooperative game. Yes. Yeah. All right, so rend, six damage. Kay. Then I'm going to roll three die. All right. And nice. uh, there's another damage, so seven, seven damage. I draw a card for that, and g gain a blood power. All right. But so first, she gets to defend. Gets to defend yep. Nope. So she's going for two. Roll five dice, Manny. I'm gonna roll five dice. The survivor's oh, looking she for vortexes. Anything. Five yeah. dice yep. on her defense. So she's nothing. Defend. She didn't Thankfully, roll any vortexes. So she's nice. down to three. <laughs> All right, so I am playing the Pyromancer. I'm kind of a glass cannon, so I just shoot and run. And right now I'm going to run. I'm going to run right to you. So now there is an option, right? There you is an option. You could have chosen to go here instead. There is. But, but you, you want to help your friend. I want to help a friend out. I already helped him once. Let's get rid of this thing. Okay. All right, so I get to take my normal action. I get a free CP. But first strike, remember? Yeah. No, oh, first you don't strike. get to do this yet. Oh. Not yet. So first oh, strike, so first strike every, every time. Every time. Ah, I, That's I was under the impression That's it was when you That's revealed fine. it. All right, so no. David is rolling for... Roll those five dice. So, and she gets a second blood power in case That's it right. matters. Oh, my. It don't matter. It don't matter. Whoops, rolling. Uh, mm. So what am I keeping so here? You're keeping these. You get to roll. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're chasing for more vortexes. Yeah. And, and you got it. One more. I'm going to take five damage. I'm taking five damage. All right, I'm going to roll all five of my dice for my defensive roll. One, two, three, four damage back at her. Mm. Nice. And Skadoosh. she's dead. I don't even have to attack her and she dies. 
I was going to say, did this come into effect? Or uh, she would have rolled a die yet. Right, when it became. But we forgot. That's okay. We forgot. We didn't need it anyway. So Jeez. here's actually a fun thing. Okay. So a engagement was started. Mm -hmm. That means you get your full turn. Yeah. So even though there is no enemy to fight, you can still take your turn to gain fire mastery, do anything. I will do that, but does the rewards happen before that happens since she died? It would happen before? right now. Okay, yeah. so Sweet. everyone go ahead and roll a die. Now we're looking at that blue chart. 20. 20? 20. 20 what? Mm. One. <laughs> so, <laughs> I right, get so we'll go in turn order. I get a plus one token, please. Yes. Kira, Kira's what do you get with get the 20? Purple. I get a purple. Oh, look at that. Would you but you don't Danny? get to look at I it. I don't get to look at this. This is for I later. A 10. We'll come back to it. He is going it. to heal three health. Yeah. I got roll? a 12. You're going to get one dollar to our communal pool. Nice. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and take my normal turn. I'm going to go say up. That I'm like jealous and excited that you got <laughs> All right. So, so she's I'm, gone, right? Yes. She is dead. She's gone off the table. I'm just going to tap her for, well, I guess it, yeah, he just gets to keep off going. the table is fine. But he just gets to take a turn. All right, so I'm going to get paid. This is an upgraded card that I was able to buy. Uh, so it cost me zero CP, and I gained three CP. Nice. And you got that during the Rosella, when we went to see Rosella. Yep. And Shop I'm key. going to spend one CP to draw two cards nice. with my double up. Nice. And yeah, I have no upgrades. This is not great. All right, so I am going to be done. Well, you could so you sell them any of the cards you don't want right now for more CP in case I'll keep you them. need them. <laughs> so what I would recommend Jeremy likes his cards. is that you can actually roll your dice and mm -hmm. try to get Burning Soul and generate Fire you Master. You still get to roll your dice? Yes. yes. Oh, that's turn. what you happened. Have you started. Started. So that's what I was trying to explain is you don't lose your turn. You get your full turn. I love that. And I'm trying to do what now? So anything that just would benefit you, like Burning stuff. Soul. So I just... Like really, you want fives. Right I just now. want... You yeah. don't want to do damage, yeah. You just want to do stuff to get... All there. right. Just one. see if you can get some fives is really all your... Two. And How about no? No. You get one because Fireball will give you one. So it doesn't right. really matter to you. All right. But it goes away. Then during it will, but... All right. All right. So it's up to me. I am playing the Shadow Thief. When I went to see Rosella, um, I was able to get a equipment as well, mm. uh, which is a coin purse, which is going to cost me four CP to get out, so it'll take a minute, but it's going to allow me to gain one additional CP during my upkeep phase, which is wonderful if you know anything oh. about the Shadow Thief, my most favorite of all Dice Throne characters. <laughs> but more CP for me is good. All, a lot of my abilities rely on my CP being dealt as damage, so getting that card out will be great. I also got this recall scroll, which allows me to choose one from my discard pile and put it into my hand. That was one of my green loot. I also got a legendary loot, which was a six it upgrade, which lets me get it out for nothing. And that means I can change anybody's, which oh, is nice. gonna be fantastic oh, to hot. use. And I got one other one, which was... You got four cards? I got four total, Damn. yeah. So one of them, was, the last one was, uh, gives me knockdown oh, after yeah. I deal eight damage. So. That's still in my deck. I've got two here, um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that works. So, I want to go you fight guys. something, hopefully. Well, you so got blue or green? I, you decide. I'm going blue. Oh, nice. I like it. This is Thorn Road Ooh. 2. Boss goes up 2 CP, and you're going to roll a die. Okay. Oh, what happens? You tell me what you roll, and I'll tell you five. what happens. You roll a five. You are going to gain Barb Divine. You just hurt yourself. I did. Okay. Yeah, There's you would have gotten. Entangled on a one or a two, or you would have gotten two gold for all of us if you'd rolled a six. Should have just rolled a six. Dang really it. But there happen. is no monster there. Better on that six. Again. And cards could still be used on that roll, or no? Tippet could. Tippet could. Because okay. Tippet's an instant action. Okay. Right. All right, so we played a full round. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cut here, and we're going to get all the way to the boss, hopefully. And we don't hopefully. have to flee. I mean, we could <laughs> flee. We could take what we have, but we don't really have. No, we're going to fight gold. This to the doesn't bitter make end. sense. Uh, so we're going to cut. And we'll come back at the boss and you can watch it then. All right, so welcome back. We have made it to the boss. Some different things have happened this time around. I think we played smarter than the first time that we played through the scenario. <laughs> obviously, yes. we'll the, see. The more times you go through this, obviously, the better uh, equipped you are, of course, because we took loot from the first time. But also, we kind of learned the do's and don'ts of using your cards. Like some of the cards we obviously are keeping back because we want to use them 
during the boss encounter. Uh, Kira was the one who found the boss, and we've kind of condensed the board. We've thrown all the tiles off because we've dealt with all of them. And we have us sitting off the, to the side with her sitting in the boss's lair. The difference, too, is that in the last scenario, or scenario one, we fought the fallen gunslinger. But now, he's not here. We're following, fighting the fallen barbarian, mm -hmm. which is different. Yes. Tell us about this guy. So the fallen barbarian is effectively this barbarian's grandfather. So at one point in the far few in the past, the uh, this barbarian agreed to go and play in the dice throne to to represent his uh -huh. people, and uh, didn't go so well. Did it, it did not go so well. <laughs> All fallen warriors are warriors that choose to serve the Mad King instead of death. Okay. And so he chose, and now he serves. And my barbarian is not too happy his grandfather chose to serve a tyrant. All right, so we have started with him on the board, and he has his own slots just like any of the other characters that we have. Mm -hmm. He's going to start with six of these tokens. Talk to us about the King's Hand yeah. tokens. So these right here, these are the King's Hand tokens, and they can be used two different ways. One is if the fallen barbarian ever fails his attack, he doesn't successfully activate anything. He then would spend one, and then he would roll a die on a five or six. He gets to take another offensive roll phase. Oh. So he gets to cheat. Okay. The other way you can use these is, let's say I hit my ultimate. Okay. Then he can try to cheat, and if he gets that five, six, he gives me a helping hand, and I have to re-roll one of my sixes. Oof. But the Fallen can only mm. cheat once per turn. Okay. Or once per, uh, yeah, turn. Because they can do it on their turn. turn and then on mine. Okay. So he's out on the table now. We have his, his King's Hand tokens. Mm -hmm. And now he gets to upgrade. So I also feel like we came into this a little bit better. We're only giving him 26 CP, which means we navigated the dungeon pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And this 26 CP of his is going to be now converted into upgrade cards that are going to cover these slots, meaning he's going to be more powerful at the start of this battle. Yeah. And to do that, you've broken the deck apart. You have all of the upgrade cards and all yep. of his regular cards. Correct. And you're going to start flipping these and putting on there using the CP that he has. Correct. So let's do this on camera. Let's figure out what he's going to get here. All right. So the first one is Skull Bash level two for two CP. Wow. OK. And we got low blow three for four. It's down to 20. Unhinged level three for four. That oh sounds boy. Great. None of this is 16. great already. Overload level two for two. Oh my. Overload level two, upgrade to three for two. Ah, so if it's better, you keep upgrading. If it's worse, you Correct. sell that off for yes. a CP. Okay. Exactly. We got Skull Bash for three, but Thanks. it's going to only cost two to upgrade. Oh, okay. I'm down to 10. Um, unhinged, he would sell because he has the better upgrade for one. Okay. Smackdown level two for two. Mm. Smackdown level three for two more. My my. Stone skin level three. We were hoping he wouldn't get that one. That's <coughs> his upgraded defense. Ooh, yeah, it's so that's level four three CP. Also. It's his level three. Well, he's he down does? to three now. He's down to three. He plays pained response for four. He's going to sell that. Go to five. Or go to four. Go to four. Yep. And then pained response level two. He'll play for two. He's down to two. Uh, um. Four CP for barbaric Rory sells. Ah. <laughs> then he plays level two, and it's slightly in our How benefit here for two. He's down to one. Now he's going to sell low blow for two. Okay. He's back. Well, he sells it for one, though, he right? He sells it for one, and then he would sell stone, stone skin as well. So the, the, the bad Ooh. news is that <laughs> he upgraded his entire board. The good news is he's only walking out of this with three CP. Right. And that's good for us. Which is, it's just, it's, yeah. It's a, it's I can a steal those. Dual you layer can. sword going on here. All right. You can if you want to. I want to try. You're also going to notice <laughs> right next to him he has a health meter. And this guy is going to start at 90 health. Yes. So we're coming out of this pretty well, though. I have 17. She has 15. We have 14, 14. over here. And Manny's sitting on 12. Right. So we're not devastated right now, but yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a lot of stuff to cut through. And that's because of the salve tokens. Yeah. So when you find the boss, every hero has a salve token when they start the game. And then when you find the boss, you can choose to spend, a, spend the token, you roll 1d6, you heal that amount, and you can do that any time during the game actually, before you start your turn. Like if you're desperate for health, you can heal. But if you save it until the boss, then you get one free reroll. Oh, on that roll. Yes. And we don't have to spend this. We right. could have chosen not to spend it when we fight the boss. Right. And then that would allow us to bring it, carry it into the next session. Right. 
All right, so have we done everything for the setup? I think we're good to go. All right, oh, so boy. now so it's hack and slash time with you, Kira, because you right. are the player who instigated this awful, awful fight. It is. So it it's is. your fault in the it's end. It's my fault. <laughs> it's true. So what I'm going to do to start, because I have a getting paid, I'm going to gain two CP right off the bat. Getting paid. Mm -hmm. Which is not bad. For those of you that know the Shadow Thief, that's great. I've got some good stuff sitting here. I have an opponent reroll, and I have my uh, special card I mentioned earlier uh, that if I do at least eight damage, I'll get to give a knockdown to our fallen barbarian friend. Cool. So, wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Attack. All right. That's not a bad way to start. What do you got going? Uh, oh, you got the double sixes? Come I got on. double sixes, so I could I could start I got, working towards a shadow a, dance. I, have a, I got a wild. All right. So, I've still got two rolls, so. Yep. See what we can get done here. You get chase. Oh, <laughs> come on. Oh, boy. Oh, oh my boy. gosh. Okay, I'm up to four sixes. Oh. I'm glad this is on camera. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Crap. All right, so I can't do anything about this last die. All right. Does so anybody want to help? Either Shatter Dance or I think w I, I have a. I have a I have a wild I can play. Does anyone else have like a. I don't. I can't help. I mean, I have a twice as well. Because yeah, if I get my Shadow win. Shank, that's going to put me up to my big. max it's and big hit. give us 20 damage. Let's do it. Let's All do right, it. so this is a six now. But it's going right. to cheat. So, yes, Let's he gets remember. to cheat, though. So and I'm, oh. you're the previous player. Yeah, so. so we're going to take this off the board. Mm -hmm. And he rolls one die, Manny? Yes. And, and what, do I, what do I not <laughs> want to roll? A you five do or not six? want a five or six. All right. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yes. Woo. You just ultimated. Oh, I man. just ultimated. Hot. So I'm going to go up to my max CP of 15. I don't get the full three, I, but that's okay. Uh, so we're going to deal 20 CP as damage. Ooh. And then boom, boom. Down to 70. I have a plus one. 21. Why so not? it's 21. <laughs> one plus one. 69. And if I successfully deal eight, so I'll go ahead and spend <laughs> yeah, one to go ahead and give him knockdown. And whoops, and I believe that's everything. And then I gain shadows. Yeah, you do. Which is not a bad thing to have right now. That right. is probably the best possible yes. way we could have started, <laughs> right? I mean, technically, yes. Barbarian could like one shot him because you could just well, stun lock him. It's your turn next, sir. <laughs> oh, All right. He, is this, now is, he's going to get to. That's undefendable? All ultimates are undefendable, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. ultimate. Right. Okay. Um, nice. Just for anyone playing at home, if you roll an ultimate, if you, have to, if you ask a question about what can happen, the answer is no. Yes. <laughs> no. If, if you want to ask any questions, the no. answers are no. Yes. You can enhance an ultimate, but you can never, ever prevent, stop, mitigate anything. Unless you have to affect the dice. You have the cheat cheater. token. Unless you're a cheater, which affects mm -hmm. dice. Because yeah. it forces you to reroll. Okay. Yeah. So now, he, he doesn't is. get to roll a defense. Nope. No. But he does get to attack me. He does. So, so explain so combat for him. All right. So the first thing the fallen barbarian is going to do is he's going to, he is a dice thrown hero. So he's going to go through all the normal things where he would draw a card and he would gain a CP. What's going to happen is he's going to be forced to play, uh, to pay for the knockdown. Okay. So he spends two. And we are really, really lucky because he pulled Skull Crush. Oh, that sounds, sounds which good. Which would inflict stun on the active player. But it costs five CP to do it. And he doesn't have enough. Oh. Yay! Oh, nice. Which, in, which I, interestingly enough, because you're in the shadows, this would have been perfect because uh. the stun would have done nothing. Right. Because he would have just stunned you, taken another turn, and dealt no more damage. That's Unless true. you like double ultimates, and then you're out of the game, anyways. But the cool thing is, he's still going to roll. Yep. So then he gains a CP. And I still have my shadows. And so on the bottom of these cards, there's a roll objective. And the roll objective for him is all slashes. Which is also good because that means he's unlikely to go for an ultimate. All right, let's roll these up. One. What did you say, Manny? <laughs> Two. <laughs> oh, oh, four of them. Okay. So right now he is dealing nine damage to you okay. and concussion. So awful. the concussion matters. It does. I will get that. But because you're in the shadows, he cannot deal any damage to you. Correct. And the concussion is going to do what to me? That means you have to skip your income phase during uh, your next turn. Which is no good, but instead of taking nine damage, that's much better yeah. than that. <laughs> I mean, I'd only go up to one. I only have one more to go up at this point, so it's right. not that big You're a deal. You're just rolling in CP anyway. So, so I am. 
You're done. I am done. He's taking that was an effective that was, turn. All right. That was a We're very good, good turn one. Yeah. Now, now this goes away. Now off screen, Manny's not really on this tile, so you're right. gonna have to physically move onto the tile. So Correct. we will move oh, your wait, barb no, onto the, the barbarian one. brawl. All right. So uh, I got to fight my grandfather now. So I draw my card. I gain my CP, and I got some pretty good cards. I got some damage modifiers, stuff like that. So I'm just gonna attack. You do it. You do what a barbarian does best. Yeah. Hit Ooh, stuff. That's a lot of swords. Wow. It is. It's three of a kind on my way to my upgraded smack two or three. Come on. Oh. Don't do it. <laughs> Just take what you get, man. Yeah. All right. Okay. Take what you get. So let's see if I can. <laughs> uh, that's that green factor. Yep. Mm -hmm. It is. It's totally like I, I'm chasing that. I want it really badly. <laughs> Okay, so currently I'm dealing eight damage to the barbarian, fallen barbarian. Um, I am gonna play get some. Actually, get I'm some. gonna hold off. I want to see what his defense is first. All right. So when you're playing dice throne, you want to play attack modifiers. Oh, you can play dice. those before or after seeing the result of the defense. Okay. Rolling okay. five. So five dice. So you got on the defense. Oh, that is awful. So he prevents six heals. of the eight. Now, is it worth using my force him to reroll? At this no, because what I was wait. looking for was he can, on two vortexes, he can uh, prevent one negative status effect from coming okay. in. Okay. And I had a, a thing that could maybe concuss him. Oh, uh, I see. So that would be not Point as okay. useful. All right. So in that case, he's taking two damage from me. And on this, he's dealing four back. So yeah. I take the four, and I go Ouch. to eight. Oh, boy. I am uh, getting... And he hasn't even attacked yet. And he hasn't <laughs> even attacked yet. <laughs> So uh, Kira, he's gonna draw a card, and he's which gain is a CP. shout. Yeah, yeah. And it says all engaged opponents receive two damage. Neat. So that's the two of us, but he spends both his CP to. He's do down that. to zero. I like it. So I'll take it. I take the two damage, which is not good for me, but uh, considering I'm at six, let's do this. All right. He is going for sorry. Three sixes and slashes. Well, One slash. That's a good start. <laughs> oh, Three yes. slashes and two oh. sixes. So, so you we need keep to the sixes yep. and we roll one of the slash. One slash. One slash. No. Okay. So two and two. He failed his turn. Woo! Really? Wait, what? Yes. What? Huh? He is successful. Yeah, he, he has nothing anything. that lines up with these dice. Yeah. Nice. That's the so way to roll them. He's going to cheat. Oh. And he's going <laughs> to want to re-roll this one. No, cheat means oh. uh, roll re roll one die. Right. And then on a five or six, that. which you did, <laughs> he takes a, another offensive roll phase. Okay. Oh. So you re so oh, now helping oh, hand oh. might be good on that die. Sure, let's do that. One CP. What is that? What are you doing? What's you? What's going on? Oh, she's so. re-rolling that five or six. I got a six. <laughs> just to, just to like, oh, you know what? Helping hand. <laughs> cool. Let's do it again. Two. Yeah. Yay. He doesn't get his offensive rolls, number two. I wanted to survive just a little longer. <laughs> yeah. That was going right. to be six health. I was, I was, That was going to be all right. I was going to so get stomped. Uh, I'm good. I'm then it's good up to, to David. Up to me. All right, come on, vampire. Miss Vampire is moving in. I'm moving in. Okay. I'm staying out. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to consume Lord, blood. Thank you very much. For zero CP. Uh, yeah. I'm going to spend these two. Okay. To get a bunch of CP. So I get four CP. Nice. Nice. Time to roll. Uh, let's see. On so four a whole of a lot kind. Of claws. You ever seen anyone re-roll all of their dice? Yes, I, mean, I do it all the time. I'm I'm doing it. Do it. I don't want that. I don't. I've want definitely gallon. done it before. I do it all the time. That's like not much better. One six. You got some cards to help I've yourself out. I've got twice as wild. So do you risk it? That's. You have one more roll, yeah. Yeah, I have one more roll. What do you guys it think? It was worth it. Oh, do, it. do it. Do it. <laughs> this has killed us every time when we start. All hands. <laughs> oh. At least those hands still do something. Uh, yes, I do awesome. have those hands. Uh, hand damage. If you have something to tip that six and increase your hand damage, it doesn't. Uh, it's, it not it's not it's worth. It's not worth the using it. the card. Yeah. I don't think so. I'll gouge for five. And do you? What's the? What's your bonus effect? Andy, do you want to roll his yep. defense? Four of a kind. Mm. Hey, here we go. Defense. 
nothing. Nice. Yay. That is really nice. Well, it takes all five. Well, Yay. four damage. Oh, oh yeah, nine. sorry. No, on yeah, on six. So you take yeah. four damage. Yeah, sorry. you take four. Oh, I take four. Mm -hmm. Yep. The healing is brutal, man. Stone skin three. Yeah, it's really intense. You good? Uh, yeah, I am. So good. you could still choose to boost that by two if you wanted. Oh yeah, you know what? Yeah, let's I will. do that. What the heck? All right, down to sixty-one. Only sixty-one health. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got Dower Glass. Transfer a random negative status effect from yourself to the active player. So which there is none, so he sells. And right. then the objective is straights. So he's at two. Okay. Oh so my goodness. Straights have I got a four five. Four five, so I'm gonna keep that. Okay. Nothing. And oh my three, gosh. four, five, six. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right then. This might so not be good. Small straight. We all used our helping hands already. So yep. <laughs> uh, so the small straight says it deals twelve damage and he receives four in return. So my twice is wild? You could totally use that. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to. Because right to. now you're you're you you're die. dead. Yeah. I am gonna use my twice as wild for Kay. three CP. So now we gotta wreck this the right way. Yeah, wreck it as good as you can. <laughs> <laughs> One's got to go to us. I think that right there. Yeah, so I effectively was able so to that, change that the values it. of two die. Yeah. So yes. Can he cheat that? He can. He can. Because you f he, he failed his offensive roll phase, so now he cheats. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> that's the downside tokens. to it is, you know, hopefully this doesn't. Ah. Oh. <laughs> what did that do? <laughs> what did that do? What did you do? He gets to retake his entire turn. Oh. He might not roll straight now. He might not. Straight. Or he might roll one right off the a, or a large straight, right how off the bat. How about a large straight instead? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. Uh, All right. I love it. So, so this is better for us. He takes six damage now instead of instead of four. That, that's better. He does. <laughs> he deals seventeen damage to you. Uh, yeah. Seventeen damage. Hmm. That's a slightly above. Interesting. Well, definitely do your defense. Uh huh. Because you yeah. could steal a little bit of health, and that takes from him. So a little bit. Maybe give him a status effect or two. Well, everybody, it's been nice <laughs> knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on, sixes here. Yeah. One. And bleed. A parting nice. bleed. All right. So yeah, I went down fighting. So he's got bleed now. He stole and some I of his health. And I stole some of his health. Yep. But then, but ouch. he went what? He did how much? Seventeen. Seventeen but to my eleven. He also takes six more, so you actually did a total of seven damage to him. Yeah. All right. Nice you job. Supernova. Damn What's eleven right. minus seventeen? Uh, <laughs> is it north of zero? It's <laughs> definitely <laughs> dead. Oh. All right. You fought well, Vampire Lord. I did what I can. I'm gonna move in. <laughs> oh, join yeah. this party. Why did she uh, join? Should I just lay her on her side because she's ceremoniously Here, dead? I'm gonna Aww. console her. Yeah. <coughs> All right, I'm Bring going to home. move up one and draw a card. Let me look what this card is. Oh, anyone have any bad status effects? No. 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 I had all sorts of cards like that. All righty. She has a concussion, um, which might be I'm good I'm going to, remove, to do this. For zero oh. CP, it's called Infernal Infusion. I'm going to roll one of my dice, and it lets me draw a card. That's good. Transference isn't going to do anything At for me. Upkeep. Upkeep I'm going to use this for zero CP, and I'm going to roll a die. I'm going to gain three more CP. Nice. nice. Okay, we're going to roll. Come on, do something here before we cut. Oh, uh, ooh. I'm going to go big. Are you? Are yeah. You gonna, are you not going to combust? We had this discussion the combust, last time. Combust are you seems it's a 12 point combustion, yeah. Ooh. Plus, you could add three more to it. Oh, you know, I would have so lost this at the start of my turn. No, so it's nine. Let's play honest. Stand play honest. honest. I like it. Play mm -hmm. honest. Um, so it's nine to twelve point combustion then. Yes. Do you have a combust already? Yes. Yeah, I oh. do. Let's not ignore that. Right. Come on. Yeah. It would have been nicer Plus at fifteen. Plus, you got another but three points to all right, there. I'll combust. You guys are talking me into it. I gain a fire mastery. I'm gonna burn them all. Yep. To do nine. Nine points of undefendable damage. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Nice. Now he can't do anything about it. Now and he can't he cheat for that either. Nope, because it was not an ultimate. Do nothing. Nice. I'm gonna play this. Uh, after attacking, roll one of the dice. Come on. Five. Or it has gained two more fire mastery. Yes. Nice. 
All right, so I am technically done. Let's see what this bad boy no does to me. No main phase two for you. Nah, I'm good. All right, so bleed I mean, first on the fallen. Oh yes, right. he goes up to CP. Bleed. Come on. Oh yes, he's gonna he gain a, a CP. Oh, he does. Okay. And he's going to draw a card. So, uh, so he draws a card. Cleansing touch, remove a random negative status effect. Aww. Well, CP. He bled while he. How much there. does that one cost? One. So we're down to two CP again. Mm -hmm. All right, and he's gonna attack me. Are you yeah. ready for this? Oh, I'm ready. And he's you're looking for all slashes. All slashes. I kind of like that actually. You won't when it's eleven damage coming at you. <laughs> he doesn't care. He got, he nothing. Care. He got nothing. Nothing. <clears throat> nothing. Nope. Oh. oh boy. Okay. All right. So it is four slashes for nine, and it's two of a kind, so concussion. All right. Well, let's do some defensive rolling here. All right, so on the first top part, I have four damage, uh, so four back to him. On this one, I've got... Yep, you gain two fire mastery because you have two meteors. Uh, yep. Oh, I didn't see the yep. meteors. Mm -hmm. And then, did you give me two? Yep. And then I, I burn went. him. I burn oh, him. Please. You burn. Burn him. Mm, nice. Burning. Yeah. All right. All right. So we have him down to 47 health, which is roughly half. Uh, I'm uh, dead. We have a dead person <laughs> on our team. Uh, we have me sitting at eight health, and you guys are still six eight. and thirteen. Yeah, we're not looking good again. All yeah. of a sudden, this looks worse <laughs> than the first scenario. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I'm feeling okay. Minus the fact that it's maybe because I'm concussed and I have no idea what's going on. All right. Well, we're gonna cut here. <laughs> we're gonna finish this and see what happens, and then come back to the couches, and we'll give you the full report on what happened. See you guys soon. All right. The dust has settled. The battle is over. Some of us, I am sad to report, are still dead. <laughs> uh, in fact, let's go down the roll. Dead or alive? <laughs> I am dead, but sacrificed for a good reason. You I'm, already knew I'm, you were dead. I'm, I'm sad to say I'm just dead. <laughs> I don't know that I helped much. You guys saw me die. I died, but we'll explain why it was so glorious. It was glorious. It was. I'm just alive because I'm amazing. Yes. <laughs> Gosh. Kira did live, uh, stay alive. The good news is someone else is dead. Yes. And that's the fallen barbarian. Yeah. Uh, and what was brilliant is... No tears to shed for your grandfather? Yeah. Hey, he betrayed his family that's when true. he served oh, the man. Man, that is cold Hard. blooded. I'm saying, I'm saying it's all Granddaddy issues. It, it, and we'll give, you, we'll give you some more details, but it ended in a really cool fashion. Jeremy yeah. went down swinging, mm -hmm. sacrifi literally sacrificed himself on his turn, but also killed the fallen barbar barbarian in the same glorious. Swing. Yeah, yeah, my defensive role took him out. Uh, while I was dying, which is fantastic. Yep. It is. All right, so let's talk about. We actually played two different games. We played the first scenario, and went through it. Um, we obviously died. Uh, yeah, we game, all died. That yeah, I mean, but the game gives you an option if you get to the end boss that you can just flee and escape with your full uh, gold and loot that you yep. have acquired. We decided to push it, and we obviously pushed in the wrong direction, and we got destroyed. Um, in the second scenario, it was a very different path that we went through because of the randomization of the tiles. And also, it was a very different boss. Mm -hmm. It was a different yeah. boss um, with all kinds of different abilities as well. But did you guys feel like uh, you were more prepared the second time around, not only in the way that you played the game, but actually the upgrading? Because I think that's hugely important to people that want to play a co-op dice run. So for me, I think the, the biggest thing for me is that I love the Shadow Thief. I play the Shadow Thief a lot you don't play it the same way. It's a, it's a different way to play the game. And so the first scenario was me getting used to that. Uh, I still think I did pretty good in the first one, generally speaking, but I went in with a different mindset for the second scenario, really thinking about how to, I'm not going for the same stuff I would normally go through, go for in a one-on-one -on -one battle with the Shadow Thief that I am in a co-op. And so having that, yes, more prepared, Going to see Rosella after the first one and having some, even though we didn't have all our gold, really helped. And I know we're gonna, we need to talk about the shopkeeper a little bit more. Yeah, before we get into Rosella, was that a design choice by you and Nate to make the game feel, obviously it's going to feel different because it's a co-op, but make the characters actually feel different in the way that you approach the game? Right. Yeah, I think it's very intentional. I know that we love the idea that each time I play, even when you play the core game, one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-two, free-for-all, you cannot play those games the same with each with this with the hero. Mm -hmm. You have to you have to learn how to play mm -hmm. in each format. Mm -hmm. 
and it just adds layers of interest for me and for well, I mean, everyone who's played it so far, especially with the co-op. And it's very cool too that um, the game is so compatible with the co-op. Like I would have never thought the first time that I played Dice Throne, all the way up to the umpteenth time that I played it, that you can play with the same cards without having to interject new rules. Like it's basically yeah. playing Dice Throne yeah. with the same existing card base and nothing really changes. I mean, there's some key words like collateral, which have a little bit different meaning now in the co-op, but mm -hmm. uh, specifically, it's the same type of game. The one difference, though, that I notice is the AI aspect of the mm -hmm. Fallen Heroes. Mm -hmm. That part is really interesting and pretty layered. Yeah. Like, that's not just some, like, for lack of a better <laughs> way of putting it, lame attempt at an AI. It really has yeah. a lot of thing that you're going for the different cards have yep. different objectives in terms of what you're trying to roll. I mean, it does leave something up to the players to try to play those roles mm -hmm. as they would typically play them. If you're going after a straight, you're yep. going to try to build that basically, just like you would if you were playing it yourself. Right. But it really adds, I mean, it felt like a co-op because we were playing against the game and the game really did feel like it was somewhat intelligent in that respect. Right, I think, I mean, and I, I'll just praise Nate because Nate, um, Nate's a programmer by trade, mm -hmm. and so his brain just processes that information. Like he has created AI systems in video games, and so when he approached this, he, I really believe he crafted a unique, beautiful, elegant AI system for Absolutely. a boss world. Yeah, it's very cool. Not only the way the minions work, but the way the boss works as well. Yep. Like, yeah. I, it really feels like a struggle against him because yep. he's so overpowered when he first. Well, well yeah, I mean, you, you all died, so <laughs> it was a struggle. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I think that's something that uh, people like me appreciate. Like, I like hard co op games. Mm -hmm. I don't like to play a game where I just breeze through it because I never feel like I want to go back to it if I do. Right. And having to go through it twice now and having the second time be just as difficult as the first time when we barely sque you know, yeah. squeeze through at the end. I think it's super fulfilling to well, people. And the great thing too is we played through scenario one or level one twice, but it felt very, very different. Yeah. Because all those different tiles, yep. we actually had a different boss mm -hmm. come up. I mean, different minions. All different of it. minions mm -hmm. that all played incredibly differently, not to mention the fact that we were able to kind of like have the loot that we had from the first scenario. So it did really feel like just a yeah. continuing adventure. It didn't feel like, oh, we've just got to reset and try this same exact yeah. game again. Mm -hmm. You really did. Portal. It made it feel like a much more robust campaign mm -hmm. yeah. than uh, four levels in and of themselves. Yeah, I know we're going to be talking about um, some of the specifics of Dice Throne Adventures in our preview. But one thing I want to touch on here was just the loot in general. Like, uh, I think that's such a unique part to this game, and I think that's going to draw people oh, in because it does feel like. Uh, people that grew up with like Diablo and those type of games yeah. where you're you're grinding. Was it intentional to make it difficult enough where people would just want to grind out a level and then yep. flee once they get the boss, get that loot, and then re-grind it out with better cards? Yes, totally intentional. Okay. Nate and I have played I don't know how many hours of Diablo two sure. and <laughs> three, more than humans should play probably. Um, but we love the idea that grinding can be encouraged, it can be fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It can be a choice and you can embrace it. And other people can try to push, push harder to, to not do that and try to be really, really efficient. And yeah, it was 100% intentional. Well, and your, the choice to add the D20 <coughs> for the yeah. loot system, I think is awesome. Because anyone familiar with <laughs> gaming in any yeah. sort of level, the fact that you can roll a die and and roll a tr 20 yes. and get something really, really juicy off of Kira that table. <laughs> yeah, Kira got we, we all rolled mm -hmm. you know, in the 18, 18 19, 19, 20, 20, 20 range, oh, which yeah. is really fun. But everything on that loot table yeah. is really good. Yes. You know, there's uh, no like, oh, I didn't get anything. I mean, even some of the low numbers were giving us something. Like, oh, well, that's nice. Yeah, you at least it get the attack modifier on attack the low modifiers. side. You can get more cards, you add gold, yep. uh, get cards, better cards from the loot system. There's all yep. kinds of wonderful stuff. But yep. I really think we should talk more about the loot like Rosella and how, like when, when she came out, it wasn't just us having the cards that we gained from the, the loot table. Right. She actually gives us some cards when we go to see her. Do you want to yeah, talk a little bit up shop, about right? that? Yeah, Yeah, so when you finish, um, you are gonna be going to Rosella's shop and upon victory, when you win and you beat a boss, she gives all of the players a number of cards, certain amounts of common cards, rare cards, and then that's what I get to shop from. So if I get five cards, let's say, four green and a blue, then I get to shop from those, and I might have 30 gold. 
and I can choose to either buy the greens and the blues, be efficient, or I can also buy salves or ways to heal myself in future campaigns. And the, the one that I love the most is that identify. Yeah. The fact that you can spend five gold to identify one of the cards that you get throughout the, the dungeon or the level. And I just love that because when you hit that 18, 19, 20, and you pull that card, you can't look at it. I know, that's, <laughs> that's what the killer is. You the can't look at it. sitting in front of you face down the yeah, whole it's, game. It's really hard not to look at it's that. It's super hard. And then I, you pull it, and you're like, oh, do I do this over the card I can see in my hand? Yeah. Well, I can tell you my answer every time I'm flipping that card over for five gold. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, mean, sure. I, I knew in there I had at least one legendary. And so for 15 gold to flip my three cards from the loot table was totally worth it because then I still had right. enough left over to buy one more of what she gave us when we went to visit her. And so, um, and I had that legendary six it, which was right. five gold. Yeah. Yeah. Not so, bad. So the other interesting thing is that when you get a card like a six it, and it can, it's going to go into your deck, it's going to replace the one in your deck. So you can't have multiple six its. But the new one might cost zero CP, or in your case, it makes it so you can six anyone's die on the board. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to take those and you put them into your sleeves or into your deck. And that was part of why like, we made generic backs. And people often asked us, why did you go generic but card backs? And we did that so that in sis situations like this, we can add these same cards to the pre-existing decks. Mm -hmm. And if you continue to use Season 1 as it exists, you can then use sleeves and just sleeve the new cards into the old ones to keep that cohesive deck. So, Manny, is there a legacy portion to this all at all? Like when you defeat the bosses, what would you consider it? Right. So Nate had this idea that he wanted to let you play through the entire first session, which is four levels. And when you finish that, there is a, there's an, a reveal of sorts where there's a way to expand the game, new levels, new minions, new loot mm -hmm. cards, uh, that kind of thing gets added into the game along with a new level of difficulty. And we're, we're, we're still brainstorming, but we're trying to figure out like if you play it through a second time and finish it, there might be another un reveal that expands the game even further. And Nate's super pumped about that. He loves this idea of this non-destructive legacy that kind sure. of expansion of a game within the game. And cool. all that stuff would be mm -hmm. hidden, obviously, in yep. some kind of container yep, inside that's the, the box. Idea. So. Oh yeah. boy, oh boy, I mean, oh that's boy. Always, that's always <laughs> exciting when you find content that's yep. uh, triggered by something that you do yep. in the game. So yep. Awesome. Hopefully that will hit. Uh, so this is on Kickstarter now. If you guys have any questions about the game, make them in the comments below. We will answer them for you. We'll have Manny jump into the comments section and answer them. And thank you for stopping by, of yeah. course. Yeah, happy to. Great time playing it, and we will catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.